Aha! If your kingdom is destroyed, the game will be over. I understand. No stopping now. Okay. Listen, there's well, since you dispatched the bandits with su bandits with such skill, maybe you can help us with another problem. There's a feral swine living here in the woods. Not a normal wild pig! We're talking about a vicious boar! As big as a bear and as wicked as a devil! The locals call him Tusk Gutter. Many hunters have, a, have lost life and limb to him! Vekel Benzin found his lair and went to kill the beast but came back with one leg. He put a bounty on the boar's head but it looks like there aren't any heroes around here bold enough to claim it. Maybe you will rid us of this monster. Amiri livens up. Hey, we're local- we're better than the local wussies, right? I can't do a woman's voice, so I'm just doing whatever. Wanna bet I can chop off this tusk gutter snout with a single swim- swing? Come on, let's find out. Alright, let's go kill this tusk gutter. Right, that's the way I like it. Let's do it. Hmm. Sure. I'd be happy to help you. March on. Da -da -da -da. There you are, Harem. What are you doing here? Harem pulls his beard, muttering something that could be either prayers or curses. Upon noticing you, he winces. Eh? What? Ah, it's you, Thorkin Iron Brew. Did I startle you? I'm sorry. Oh no, that doesn't matter. I was just contemplating the futility of existence and the worthlessness of the universe. The ways of Grotus are great. My humble mortal mind cannot fully grasp them, but I do what I can. Harem smiles apologetically. Past, tell me. My life is divided into two parts. The first was filled with blind wandering, doubts and attempts to serve Torag. Also, I'm going to attempt to actually mimic Harem's voice now. The second part began when I accepted Grotus into my soul and received a clear vision of the world. What exactly would you like to know? Where are you from? My life story began in Larad. A city of dwarven clerics and acolytes. They serve Torag and the other dwarven gods. Torag's brothers Angrad and Magrim. Torag's wife Fulgrit and his daughter Balka. His sons Grundinar, Grundinar, Coles and Trud. And also Torag's sister, Drangvit. Harem curls his lips in contempt. I wouldn't be surprised if they built a temple to Torag's pet dog. Sorry, I let myself get carried away. Aram sighs and pulls his beard several times. Larad is the second largest dwarven city in the Five Kings Mountains. It's built up around numerous temple caverns which serve as places of worship for all the dwarven gods. Many pilgrims from every corner of Galarian come to Larad to pray to their gods. Some remain to live there. The, simply is imbue the city is simply imbued, imbued with faith. You can't swing a dead cat without hitting a cleric. It's no surprise, inspired by the aura of this city, that I decided as a young boy to dedicate all my efforts to becoming a cleric of Torag. You once tried to serve Torag? Not just tried, it was a burning passion! I craved it by day and dreamt of it at night! Harem shakes his head as if amazed by his own stupidity. You see, Thorkin Ironbrew, from my first days I felt the presence of the god at my back. I heard his whispers and felt his power through the nature of this wor though the nature of this world was unclear to me. I thought Torag himself was trying to speak to me, and I did all I could to understand his words. Oh, what a naive fool I was! I had no idea that Torag, that uncom uncompri uncompromising, conceited god glamorized by all dwarves, was capable of betrayal! He turned away from me, Thorkin Iron Brew. He left me in the hour when I put all my hopes in him and desperately needed his support. Torag is the god of craftsmanship, so every follower, especially the clerics, must smith their own suit of armor. 
The day when this work is finished is like the second birthday for a dwarf. He's newly born in the eyes of Torag. He Harem sighs heavily and falls silent for a time. My second birthday never came. I couldn't make iron, not even a sword, not even a simple nail. My hammer smashed my fingers and fell on my feet. Molten iron burned my hands. The clerics laughed as they healed me. They used to say I was cursed by Torag, so finally I gave up any attempt to please the betray betrayer god. Even if Torag has rejected you, is that enough reason to leave your homeland? You don't know much about dwarves. I am a fucking dwarf! Harem lets out a sad sigh. How can a dwarf cursed by Torag go on living in a city where every single soul bows to Torag? I was alone, disgraced, humiliated, insulted. A lone tear glints in the light before sliding down Harem's cheek and hiding in his beard. I was trying to drown my sorrows in drink, but even the owner of the cheapest pub on the road would laugh at me while he put those mugs in front of me. I couldn't take it any longer. I wanted everything to end. But there was one thing that kept me going and prevented me from ending my life. I could still hear that divine whisper behind my back. It was yet faint. It took a long time before I could hear it clearly, but having heard it once, I could never forget it. It was clear that none of Lorad's de deities favored me, so I left the Five Kings Mountains and went out searching. I didn't think dwarves ever worshipped Grotus. How did you learn about him? Oh, but that blessed day became the beginning of a new life. Alone and abandoned by all, I spent many dull hours in a filthy tavern by the roadside. I don't recall the town, nor even the country. I had no money. In fact, all I had was a hunk of stale bread. I was weary and almost fainting from hunger. And that was the moment when the whisper from my god became more clear. It was like he had been calling me. It was like he was calling me. At last my sufferings had come to an end. It was a miracle, Thork and Iron Brew. I had paid full price for it with my torments. I couldn't control myself. I walked out of the tavern and straight into the nearest forest, and there I found the ruined temple of Aroden, the lost god. Several figures clad in robes were holding a silent service there, a service to a god I knew nothing of. None minded when I stood beside them. For the first time in my life, I felt myself at home. My new brothers told me that they were clerics of Grotus, the god of the end times. They were traveling around Galeria and spreading the teachings of Grotus, despite all the persecution, contempt, and misjudgment they received from others. I gladly shared this burden with them. For now, I knew whose voice had whispered to me through all those years. Wait, so you couldn't even make a simple nail and you blamed Torag? Are you suggesting that my problem was not a curse, but just my own ability, inability to work with metal? Or maybe you're saying that I was just too lazy. Harem looks into your eyes defiantly, his hands trembling with suppressed rage as he runs his fingers over his beard. You're a fool if you think so. An ignorant fool. Have you ever met a dwarf who can't handle a smith's hammer? Even our children crafts ni craft knives. No, no, no. Torag is the cause of my sufferings. The betrayer god deliberately cursed me just to make a laughing stock of me. Harem raises his hand and shakes his fist at someone above. But I won't let myself get... Uh, to well, let myself to get angry at you, what? You're an ignorant and blind soul, and my aim is to guide you th through this dying world that marches towards its end. I will open your eyes or die trying. Grotus will be pleased with either outcome. Yeah, you're you're fucking weird. Sure. Huh. No stopping okay now. then. Oh wait, right. I should sell everything, shouldn't I? Bakken. Show me what you have.
Hmm. Oh, that was the yeah. Uh, huh, 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 huh. Hmm. Hmm. Notable? Ah, yes. Huh. Uh, feels like a terrible life choice to sell that. Get rid of that. Probably can get rid of that as well. I need more camping rations. Oh, snap! Uh-huh. I haven't really- I have not been back here in a very long time, have I? Uh, 